Dave here with another video, and today we're talking about a revival going on in your city that you don't want to miss out on. Recently, my wife and I, along with our church family, were at the front of City Hall as part of National Day of Prayer that was going on in every state in the United States. Many cities were in a revival on that day and continue. A revival is when you return to God so that God can return to you. See how that works? Again, a revival is when you return to God so that God can return to you. It's in the Bible. Go to your phone and quickly look up Zechariah chapter 1, verse 3. You'll see that the scripture in Zechariah chapter 1, verse 3 says, Therefore, tell the people, this is what the Lord Almighty says, Return to me, declares the Lord Almighty, and I will return to you, says the Lord Almighty. And that, again, is in Zechariah chapter 1, verse 3. So what does this mean? God places much of the burden of what we will become on our response to him. Think about that. Again, a revival is when you return to God so that God can return to you. If we have drifted from God, his call and desire for us is to return to him. God promises that if we will return, he will immediately renew his relationship with us. Now, that's a good deal, don't you think? It's worthy of our attention. But God is God. So why not return to God if we have drifted away? If you look at James, chapter 4, verse 8. Again, that's James, chapter 4, verse 8 in the Bible. There is a promise that if we draw near to God, then God will draw near to us. Look at it. James, chapter 4, verse 8. Come near to God, and he will come near to you. Wash your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. And again, that's in James, chapter 4, verse 8. Now, look at this one. Look at this one. I like the way the scripture Matthew, chapter 7, verse 7. Again, that's math. I'm losing my voice. Matthew, chapter 7, verse 7, guarantees that if we seek Christ, we will find him. Much of the Christian life rests upon our response and our desire to experience God to the fullest. So look at Matthew, chapter 7, verse 7. Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. You know, that is so powerful. That's worth reading again. So again, that's in Matthew chapter 7, verse 7. Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. And again, that's in Matthew chapter 7, verse 7. Much of the Christian life rests upon our response and our desire to experience God to the fullest. Here are three questions many people ask. I hear them often, but the three questions people ask are things like, why is it some Christians seem to go so much deeper in their walk with God than others? That's number one. Number two, people sometimes ask, why have some had so much powerful intercessory prayer ministries that have changed the courses of nations. People ask that. Number three, why has God chosen to anoint the words of some so that when they speak or pray or preach, it is obvious their words are consecrated by God? Those are the questions people ask. It is because these folks have committed themselves to seek and pursue God until his presence is powerfully real in their lives. They have decided to settle for nothing less than a vibrant relationship with God, and he has honored their desire. It's a life of consecration, meaning separated for God. It's a life separated for God. It's a true recognition of knowing what God is doing in our lives. Ask yourself this question. Ask yourself, have you become complacent in your relationship with God or are you hungering for more? What's your answer? 
don't become satisfied with a relationship with God that is broken by sin and void of the power of the Holy Spirit. You have just as much of God's powerful presence available to you as the greatest saint in Christian history. That is true. Return to God. There is so much more in store for you if you will just make that simple choice. Pay attention. It is irresponsible, insane, and impossible to run from God. So why do it? Let's not be in a place of neglect in our spiritual lives and commitment to our Lord God, our Father. God has a promise for you. Don't ignore it. Check out the scripture, Jeremiah 29, verse 11. That's chapter 29, verse 11 in the book of Jeremiah. It's my favorite scripture. So Jeremiah 29, 11 says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. And that's in Jeremiah 29, verse 11. Allow yourself forgiveness through humility, honesty, and confession. Be real with yourself. No God is waiting for you. Just tell God, I am here. Return to God. God awaits your response. Well, he's waiting. From the Resurrection Center, my name is Dave.